How are you doing? How's sunny Florida? Oh, it's stunning. I love it. It's perfect right now. In the summer, it's awful, but right now it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> How's the weather over there? Uh, I mean, I live in England, so obviously it's terrible. But, uh, <laughs> there you go. You get used to it after years and years. Yeah. Where are you based in London or? Uh, no, so uh, my office is in uh, Derby, which is yeah, kind of like okay. bang smack in the middle of the country. So, um, yeah, I mean, we, oh. we end up heading down to London and all over the shop quite a lot. But uh, I mean, it doesn't really matter where you live in the UK. You're going to have cloud in November. But where we are is, is great. I'm, I'm happy here. <laughs> Perfect. That's awesome. All right. Well, for anyone that doesn't know, this is Jack Wathan from Anchor Property UK. Anchor Property provides yacht crew with the transparent solutions in the UK for the ever-growing list of obstacles that yachties face when trying to invest in property. We did a profile highlight on Anchor Property back in June on our blog, so I just wanted to catch up with Jack again since I started the podcast for our listeners. Also, I think that you've got a lot of great advice and knowledge um, for people outside of the UK that you can share just about investing in general. So I know that you guys just really focus, you're just based in the UK and you just help people purchase in the UK. Um, yeah. Can you tell us a bit about yourself and your team? Yeah, and absolutely. Yes. So yeah, as you said, I'm Jack. I run Anchor Property uh, here in the UK. Uh, I used to be a yachty myself. I worked for three years in the industry uh, on two boats, uh, Diamond A and uh, Lady S, if anyone's heard of those. Um, I was in property before that. I studied property at university. I worked in London for several years working for a commercial property firm uh, before I went out yachting um, and then came back uh, three years ago now uh, and started my own business uh, called Kingcroft Homes. Uh, basically renovating old properties, um, student accommodation, flats, all kind of different things. Uh, and off the back of that was created Anchor Property. So Anchor Property is essentially um, a company that helps, just like you said, helps crew to invest their money in property uh, at the moment, specifically in the UK. Um, but we also try and provide as much information as we can generally on how to evaluate property, you know, the general process how financing works, et cetera, so that kind of anyone can learn a bit more about how it works and how it should be done and how they can make the most out of their hard-earned money. That's great. And I had some questions come up from our Instagram. I posted a story just asking if anyone has any questions about property investment. And the first one I got was, what are the benefits of property investment? Yeah, okay, sure. So, I mean, I'm biased probably, but uh, the way I see it, that there's lots of benefits. I mean, for yacht crew specifically, we all know what it's like. You know, we work hard, we earn a lot of money, and it's also very easy to maybe spend that money in the wrong places, on the wrong things, uh, at the wrong times. And one of the biggest benefits for property investment is you're able to use the money that you've earned to grow. You know, it helps you not just now by providing you with a constant income from rental. Um, but the other biggest benefit of investing in property is that if you do it right, uh, the property that you buy is going to go up in value. And you never know when you might be leaving yachting. Uh, you might be in it for the long term. You might be in it for the short term. But either way, having a really good, solid financial foundation um, is going to help you whatever you decide to do in the future. Incredible. Um, I also own my own home here in Fort Lauderdale and just found we bought a duplex. So, you know, when I went land based, I live in one side of rent out the other. So I've seen firsthand, you know, how awesome it is for me to have that freedom. But like you say, and on your on your website, um, if anyone doesn't know, anchorproperty.co.uk. Um, and I was reading on your website how you say, when people think about purchasing places, and this kind of ties into the second question I had, what exactly do you look for in a property before you decide to invest? I know sometimes people will think, oh, I want to buy my hometown because maybe they want to move there someday. But if they're thinking about investing um, from just, you know, a return point of view, what are like your top tips? Yeah, I mean, that's such a good point because there is a massive difference between buying your own home uh, and buying right. yourself a property that's going to be an investment. Uh, you know, if you're buying your own home, you're going to have completely different criteria. It's not going to be something that's making you money. It's going to be a place that you want to live in that, you know, it might look nice. It might be, you know, close to your family, etc. But when you look at investing in property, you need to be looking at completely different things and you need to basically simply remove as much of the emotion out of the decision as you can. You need to be looking at it totally objectively, uh, looking at the numbers, whether it adds up, whether it's a good area for investment long term and not just kind of now. So what do we look at? Well, our clients, basically, everyone's different. And the way that we do it is we look at their 
their budget, which is obviously, you know, a big deciding factor. Um, but we also kind of get to understand their, their relationship with risk, because some areas are much riskier and the returns can potentially be a lot higher. Um, and some areas are much lower risk, but the returns might be lower. So it, it really does depend on a case by case basis. But uh, the my most recent client, uh, they live near a city in the UK, a place called Birmingham. Um, where they actually came from wasn't the best investment area. Uh, it was quite expensive, quite a, a lo local residential area where families lived. Um, he knew that he wanted to invest kind of in the general area. So because we had a good knowledge of the city, we were able to highlight areas which, you know, he may not have known about or may not have ever wanted to live in, but actually, in fact, were really, really good investment areas. So it's all about just doing as much research as possible into an area um, and getting his feel for it before you kind of move forward and start spending your money. Right. And you guys look at everything down to bus routes and Wi-Fi connectivity and all that kind of stuff, which I just think is incredible. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's the small things that can make a massive difference. Um, and when we look at properties, yeah, you're right. Just a few of those you mentioned there. We're going to look at schools. Are they good schools? How close are they? We're going to look at bus routes. We're going to look at trains. We're going to look at local GDP, local crime statistics. You know, we're going to look at every single piece of information that we can. It's important to have because small little things can make huge difference and usually the difference is negative and what I mean by that is if you miss something let's say I don't know yeah we do you find a street that hasn't got hasn't got internet run up it or something or you find a street where 200 meters away they're about to build a power station or an incinerator or something not knowing that and then investing your money can like massively detrimentally affect your investment in the future so having the fullest picture is important and I think that's that's one of the biggest mistakes that maybe people make. They they rush into it. They maybe think it's easy and they don't do the really in-depth necessary research. Uh, and that's kind of the only way that you can really come a cropper. So, yeah, taking the time and finding out as much as you can is, is pretty key. That's so true. And I like that you guys look at not just how much can you get per month, you know, for return on investment in regards to the rent, but also the long term, you know, is this property going to go up over time? which is really clever. Yeah, I mean, it, that, that's one of the biggest things with property. It's, it's a balance. Everybody kind of wants to see that rent every month. That's the easy, immediate thing. But really with property, when you think about how you're going to make the big money, it's usually over 10, 15, 20 years. That property could have doubled, tripled in value over that time. So thinking about yeah. what's going to happen, obviously no one has a crystal ball and there's no guarantees, but that's going to make a massive, massive difference to how your money works for you. So it's about finding a balance of the two. And yeah, it's, it's not easy by any stretch of the imagination, um, but that's, that's, that's what we do and that's what we help our clients do. And what do you find is the biggest mistake that people make when it comes to investing in property? I mean, obviously you guys help people, you know, to avoid those mistakes, but what are the, some of the big things you see people doing that's, you know, not benefiting them? Yeah, I mean, Yacht Crew, in particular, um, they can make some mistakes like it's, it's usually when people try and try and rush things. So, you know, mm -hmm. they've got this money. They're talking about their other crew members. They want to invest in property. They've heard that someone else has invested in property and they've made loads of money and they kind of feel, you know, oh, I'm pressured to do it. And I really want to I want to own a place. And that is definitely a good thing to do. But if you don't really do the proper research and look into what you're buying or where you're buying, you can end up with a property where, you know, you've spent, let's say, £50,000. You've saved it up over two seasons. You've bought yourself a property. But actually, the return isn't very good. And it doesn't have the potential to go up in value as much as, let's say, another property in a different city. So I think buying in a place where you feel comfortable because you maybe live there or someone else has bought there is is in my opinion generally a mistake sometimes people are lucky and that area is a good investment area but a lot of the time you'll find that there's somewhere better where your money could have been placed and that's kind of what we're trying to help people do is find those really good areas so that their money works you know really really hard for them it all comes down to research at the end of the day learning about the area the type of building, looking into the legal aspects. And again, as I said before, looking at what's going to happen in that area in the future. So yeah, taking your time, I think that's one of the biggest things. Now, kind of going into that, is there a certain time of year or that you look at? Like I know here in South Florida, because all of the, you know, all the Canadians come down, um, there's a huge influx of people in the winter. 
I see the property prices every year get driven up. So, you know, if people are buying right now, it's definitely a seller's market at this point. People are listing their houses for the most ridiculous prices <laughs> kind of here. Um, but that's a very seasonal thing here. Do you guys have that in the UK or do you, do you find that's a normal thing? So in the UK, it works slightly differently. Uh, I mean, in terms of seasonality, well, we don't really have, unless you're buying a property, let's say, you know, by the seaside or somewhere that's in a really, really strong tourism spot, it's generally fairly flat. Uh, in terms of the best time to sell or the best time to buy, I mean, it, it can really depend. Before Christmas is always a really good time to be looking. Um, why is that? Well, if you're selling your house, you really want to have sold it before Christmas and, you know, move into your new place. Uh, and if you're buying, that means that you can kind of usually, you know, get a decent deal just before Christmas because people are so desperate to sell. Um, if you're buying, summer holidays are also a really good time in the UK to buy. When families are off, if they're trying to sell their houses, most people aren't looking to buy. You know, they're going on holiday or they've got their kids at home and stuff like that. So that can be another really great time to get a bargain. Um, that's in terms of like seasonally. In terms of generally the best time, I mean, there's a lot of talk in the UK at the moment about our political situation uh, with the European Union and Brexit, etc. Um, but there's an old phrase in property that says the best property is the one that you bought three years ago. Now, what that means is you can spend a lot of time thinking, oh, is now the best time, is now the best time and delaying buying property. But the majority of people you speak to who have done it don't regret having done it because in three years time, that property generally speaking, will be worth more. And even if it's not, you'll have had years and years of rental coming in. So being able to avoid that kind of what we call analysis paralysis, where you overthink things, sometimes it's just important to just just do it. Is there a city right now that you would most recommend in the UK to buy? Like, is there something that you're just looking at where you could just highly recommend? Yeah, I mean, so we have to be careful here, but we look at a lot of statistics about where property prices are moving. Uh, and in the UK at the moment, you know, quite strange things happening for years and years and years London was you know the place to buy everyone was obsessed with London it was where property prices were going through the roof internationally people wanted to buy there uh, and you know everyone just thought it was the most incredible thing ever but recently uh, London is actually one of the only cities in the UK where house prices have really started to slow so investors are looking elsewhere to find those returns and find that growth so at the moment, we're kind of focusing most of our clients into cities slightly further north. So places like Birmingham, uh, Manchester, uh, Liverpool. These are cities where prices are moving and they're moving more and more and more. Um, people are wanting to live there. We've got much better universities in those cities and we've got much higher graduate retention, which means a lot more young individuals wanting to live there. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of exciting opportunities. So it's 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 difficult sometimes to persuade people to try new areas but really if you look at the statistics and ignore a lot of the newspapers then you can you know you can really find some good investments so yeah birmingham manchester liverpool in my opinion you can't go far wrong with those three at the moment that's great liverpool is the first city i ever visited in the uk I actually joined my first vessel in liverpool no way <laughs> what did you think yeah so it, it was great i absolutely loved it it's very when I was there, it was a long time ago. It was almost 10 years ago now. Sure. It was a very artsy city, which I really enjoyed. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, Liverpool's coming on leaps and bounds. Actually, last year, so the last 12 months, Liverpool and Glasgow in Scotland, those two cities saw the highest growth in house prices across the whole of the UK um, at like 7.8% wow. or something. So it's a really, really exciting place uh, to be investing. One of my friends, he just recently bought an investment property there a couple of months ago. Um, and that's already gone up in value from when he bought it. So it's it, things are moving there. And it's, yeah, it's an interesting place. So it's perfect time of year, really, if someone is looking or if they're just starting to think about it to wait till summer holidays. So that's quite good. Yeah, I mean, it, just before Christmas. It, it completely depends on, on the types of properties as well. I'm sure you have this in Florida. Uh, depending on what you're buying depends on kind of when the best time to be looking is. If you're looking at buying four bed family home it's a completely different kind of set of rules to whether you're looking at buying a two bedroom apartment so it's it, it's just kind of understanding that researching that and giving yourself the knowledge so that you've got the upper hand and you can you know make the best investments 
Now, in regards to that, what people are looking at has a lot to do with their budget, I'm sure. How much does how much deposit do people generally have to put down for their mortgage? Yeah, okay. So in the UK, uh, we have fairly standard rules. Uh, when you're getting a buy-to-let mortgage, which is specific products for investing in property, uh, they have to put up 25% of that property value. So £100,000 flat, £25,000. Pretty simple. Um, it, it kind of different. The rules change when the person who's investing in the UK is a foreign national. Uh, it's, it's Then it becomes a bit of a sliding scale because it more depends on their background, uh, their international assets, their salary, etc. So, yeah, that can be variable. But in terms of from the UK, buying in the UK, 25% is pretty much the, the flat rate. So it's fine. It's manageable, especially for yacht crew. There's heaps and heaps of investment options, kind of regardless of their budget. There's, there's a lot out there. And I love Freddie's success story. Um, and he's he's joined you guys now, right, at Anchor Property? Yeah, so Freddie's pretty much taking control of like the practical side. So I was with him this morning, actually. We were out uh, at our local hardware store picking out some tiles for a project that we've got going on um, here in Derby, a, a student project that we're doing. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Fre- Freddie's, Freddie's great. He came to us two years ago. Um, had no property knowledge specifically. Uh, but I'd worked with him on Lady S, so he was fairly practical. He knew that he wanted to get into property. Um, and he was pretty much our first anchor property client. So at the time, it was, it was just me. Um, and we helped him to find his first investment, which was, which was pretty exciting. Uh, and now we're two years on. So literally this week, his property has been revalued for mortgage purposes. Um, and it's, yeah, it's gone up in value significantly by about 18%. So he's a, he's a very happy chappy. He's on his third now. So it's, it's one of those. You, you'll find that people will wait a long, long time to maybe buy that first investment property. But once they have, that's all they can think about. <laughs> then they're saving for the right. next one. They're saving for the next one. They're saving for the next one because the benefits are pretty obvious once you've done it. And you guys help people with finding people to manage your pro- their properties, right? You guys help people set up, get that whole thing set up. Yeah. So management's one of those really, really important things. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not sure about the US or anywhere else specifically, but in the UK, we've got lots and lots of rules which manage how we manage properties. Um, basically, it comes down to some unscrupulous landlords being not too kind to tenants, which has meant that they've massively tightened up the rules. So we help find local management for any of our clients who are interested in buying investment property. Uh, and it's a really, really important thing, especially for yacht crew, because if you're on the other side of the world, the last thing you want is someone calling you up, telling you that their boiler's leaking or, you know, that they're having a problem with their carpets or something. You just want it to be sorted. So finding robust management is is absolutely crucial. Um, and we do that by interviewing local management agents, you know, finding out whether they're any good, talking to other landlords who might have used them, uh, looking at their reviews on the internet, et cetera, and just, just meeting them and finding out who the best people are for the job. Uh, and it can make a huge, huge difference. So I'd, I'd recommend anyone that's looking to purchase investment property, whether they do it with us or by themselves, make sure that you really, really look into your management company and make sure that they're good people that you're going to want to deal with. Yeah, definitely. That's so true. How much do they charge over there? What's their percentage? So usually it's 10% for full management. So they'll take 10% each yeah. month of the rent. And for that, they will pretty much sort everything. They'll organize all your legal certification. They'll be the people that pick up the phone. They'll take the rent off the tenant and then forward it onto you wherever you want it. Um, and yeah, they'll just be that middleman so that, you know, you don't really have to deal with anything. So yeah, 10% is fairly standard. That's really quite fair, actually. We were so lucky when we bought our first house up in West Palm Beach, we found this guy in town called Glenn. And I just did what you did, you know, researching and meeting him. And he pulled up with his face on the side of his truck. <laughs> and I was like, OK, this guy, you know, believes in himself. He believes in his company if he's putting his face <laughs> on the truck. So um, and I just had such a great experience with him. You know, 10% is like nothing when you're getting, I think we're clearing about $1,000 a month on that property. So he was, you know, taking $98 or something. Yeah. Um, and because because they're management companies, they have all the connections with, you know, local plumbers, electricians. They get good deals also with those people and they just manage absolutely everything. And when you're at sea, 
you know, you don't even have time. Sometimes you might not even be able to pick up the phone. It's just such a great thing if you find the right person. And then, you know, you hear stories. You know, there's someone who sold them their home and they're like, oh, I'll just go by and check on it for you once in a while. And it's like, no, you don't want that person. Like you really do want someone who's dedicated, <laughs> who knows what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> they have the connections and that's awesome. I couldn't agree more. And a, a lot of people say, you know, oh, I'm going to buy this property around the corner for my parents because my parents are going to manage it. Now, I mean, that's right. a really nice idea. And I'm sure their parents are lovely, lovely people. But at the end of the day, especially in the UK, there are so many laws and regulations which need to be met with gas safety, uh, with, you know, giving the tenants the right information about their rights as tenants. If you don't do those kind of things, then in a lot of cases, the tenants can just stop paying their rent and you won't have any legal right to evict them. So getting it right. Wow. Yeah, so it can be massive. You know, if you think about uh, a tenant staying in your apartment for six months without paying any rent, that could cost you thousands of pounds. Whereas you're so right, if you're paying a management agent maybe a hundred pounds a month, you know it's it's just it just makes financial sense. And if, yeah, you're working hard, chartering all over the world. You just want peace of mind, and you know you can't really put a price on that, in my opinion. So even though I live in the UK and m most of my rental properties, because we have our own portfolio in Kingcroft Homes, are within you know 10, 15 miles of where I live. I still get my properties managed by a professional just because they know what they're doing. I trust them. And, you know, they're just that filter. And that's really, really important. Right. That is nice too to have a buffer. I guess it's kind of like almost like having crew agents or a management company on a yacht. You've got those in between people that deal with all the legal, all the management, all that kind of stuff. And you don't have to be the person, you know, <laughs> going up there yourself and be like, um, hi guys. Yeah, we're going to have to ask you to move on. <laughs> you know, they've been squatting there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, nice. and, and sometimes, I mean, I've, I've had it in the past. I did I did manage all my own properties for over a year because I wanted to kind of experience what it was like. I wanted to know all the rules and all the regulations because, you know, that's really important for me, making sure that even even if I'm paying someone to do something, I want to know myself what they're doing so that I know whether I'm getting good value. But it got to the point where I was right. just like, you know, the tenants would be calling you up. If they know you're the landlord as well, then they're much more likely to just call you up and complain about things that don't need to be complained about. So it's if you've got a nice agent who can just kind of listen and mediate and you know make sure that you're only contacted when you really need to be it's just going to save you so much time now jack i wanted to ask you guys if you can share with us what your rates are i know that with freddie's story for example on your website you guys negotiated a really good rate for his property investment which that what he saved like more than covered your guys's fee and then also you know put some money back in his pocket yeah so it, we i always like to do that you know I, I think it's really important if someone's gonna pay for a service then it needs to make sense um so it, we usually charge a flat fee um we don't like charging percentages because it obviously disincentivizes us and we want to be as clear as possible uh it, it does kind of depend slightly depending on whether these UK clients or overseas clients, overseas clients, it's it's a lot difficult. It's a lot more difficult. Um, there's a lot more work involved. Uh, gaining finance and things like that can be a lot more difficult. So, uh, when it comes to overseas clients, that's kind of a discussion that we have with clients, obviously at the beginning of the process, and um, come to an agreement with them. But uh, our clients in the UK, we charge them two thousand uh, pounds as a flat fee, and for that, they pretty much get the entire process managed for them. So. We'll start them off with a client brief meeting where we'll sit down with them, work out their budget, work out their strategy, uh, answer any questions they've got about mortgages and locations, etc. Um, once we've got that done, we'll introduce them to our mortgage broker and our solicitor, who obviously they don't have to use, but using those people who know about yacht crew and know the situation is massively important and it really, really helps create a fluid, fluid process. Uh, and then we find them properties. So uh, last week I was in Birmingham. I seem to spend a lot of time in Birmingham. Uh, I was there last Friday and the Friday before just finding properties for a client that we've recently taken on. Um, I think in total I viewed 13 properties for him, uh, evaluated them, put them forward to him. And we actually put an offer in earlier today on one, which was really exciting. So, uh, yeah, yeah. So and I, we always try and negotiate out our fee. I mean, that's. That's just something that we think is really important. Uh, and it also means that theoretically, you know, people are getting the service that we provide for for free, which 
you know, if you ask me, it's a bit of a no brainer. <laughs> yeah, that is really incredible. That's amazing. How does it work also with people viewing the ho- the properties? Do you send it to them in an email? We, we act as a filter. So, you know, we, we might look at, as I said, I've looked at 13 properties for this client. I didn't send all of them to him because some of them would be in complete waste of time. So we look at them, uh, we take extra photos because you can't really trust the state agent's photos sometimes, you know, especially mm-hmm. not nowadays with filters and fisheye, you know, they can make the smallest place look huge. Yeah. So um, we take real photos, talk to the estate agents, ask a lot, lot of questions. We have like a pre-prescribed list of questions, which we ask every estate agent, which well, they obviously absolutely hate because it means they have to do more work but we make sure that we get as much information as possible and then the properties that we think fit with the client's needs we'll put together in an appraisal pack and we'll send it over to them so that you know they can have a proper look in their own time Uh, and then if they still find those properties to be interesting we'll always do a second viewing because that's also really important Uh, a second set of eyes or a second time you always notice different things Um, and then yeah depending on what they want if they're happy, then we'll move forward with negotiations. So it's it's not it's not a quick process, unfortunately. But you know, at the end of the day, when you're spending this much money, you can't really rush these things. So taking the time to do it properly, uh, which some clients find frustrating because you know they, they want it to happen, but um, that's part of the service that we offer. We you know we make sure that we do everything properly the first time, so that you know you don't have any nasty nasty mishaps in the future of your investment yeah and i can highly recommend that now i purchased a home in west palm that i did it w- did work out great but i had no idea what the heck i was doing <laughs> at all um i got really lucky there with selling that property and moving down to fort lauderdale but um i highly recommend doing it the right way getting the right people getting the right contacts the right advice taking your time they're actually getting your service for free and you're handling everything for them it sounds like an incredible service and yeah as, as a property investor myself i highly recommend talking to jack um if they want if people want to get a hold of you they can just shoot you an email yeah absolutely yeah no problem at all i'm always on my emails so um people are more than welcome to drop me an email or you know we get a lot of people messaging over facebook or instagram and you know it, one of the important things i just want to stress is you know it, i'm more than happy to answer questions i'd say probably 80 percent of the emails that i respond to uh, they're not clients the people aren't paying me I just kind of end up, you know, helping them out with the odd question or, you know, filling them in with a piece of information that's missing. And, you know, I'm more than happy to do that. I I was yacht crew myself and I saw how difficult it can be. Uh, And, you know, it is really difficult. If you Google property investment, you're going to get pages and pages of nonsense. Uh, So anyone that wants to kind of just clarify something that, you know, they're more than happy to get in contact and either me or another member of our team will, you know, take five minutes to email them back that's no problem at all should i put your email in the show notes then? please do yeah okay perfect jack at anchorproperty.co.uk and you can also find them on instagram at anchor property thank you so much jack for your time if anyone has any more questions for jack please do get hold of them on instagram um, you can also send them to us we can send you on jack's way but definitely check out the show notes for everything that we talked about today for the links to the website and to their instagram and to email jack thank you very much thank you jack yeah thank you